Hello everyone and welcome to the first video of a series of videos that will cover MS-DOS memory management. I was thinking about a way to make this video, but then I was like, you know, there are already so many good videos about MS-DOS memory management on YouTube, I don't need to make another one. Instead, I decided, let's just start from the very basics and work our way through all the different types of memory in MS-DOS. So instead of making one long video, let's break the topic into pieces that's much easier to digest and we can play around with it. In today's video, I want to cover a very basic MS-DOS installation. And for this, I set up a system. It's a 486DX266, but we will equip it with only one megabyte of system memory. I guess I was very lucky picking up these memory sticks one time when I was at the scrapyard because I wasn't aware that I have memory sticks with this low capacity. And this is great because, well, it will be perfect for today's video. Now, these memory sticks are not the fastest ones. And as you can see here, they have a suffix of 10. And that usually means 100 nanoseconds. If you're used to FPM memory, then you're looking mostly at 70 and 80 nanoseconds. And EDO memory usually goes down to 60 and 50. And some of them, like on the Voodoo 2, go down even to 25 nanoseconds. But the good thing is that these four memory sticks work in the 486 system that we are using today. So let's talk a little bit about DOS. The main concept we have to understand today is that MS-DOS is a one megabyte operating system because it can only access one megabyte of system memory. And this is it. MS-DOS cannot access more than one megabyte of system memory. And this limitation comes from the original x86 CPU released by Intel, the 8086. An 8086 CPU can only access a maximum of 1 megabyte of system memory. And this is what MS-DOS was built for. Every release of DOS was backwards compatible to 8086 CPUs. This 1 megabyte limitation shows up in other ways as well. If you have an older machine, like my 386 for instance, you can see that the memory count for the first megabyte is slower than the rest of the memory. And in the BIOS, you may get an option to test the memory above 1 megabyte. And when the system boots, right before the operating system takes over, in the system configuration summary, you see something called base memory. In here we see 640 kilobytes. This is less than 1 megabyte, but we will see what this is all about in a moment. So the limitations of DOS is due to an old CPU, an 8086 from Intel, and that is why we are limited to accessing 1 megabyte of system memory even in MS-DOS 6.22. By the way, I probably have two of those 8086s, but I don't know for sure if I have two. One I do have because I found recently a Model 30 from IBM. As you can see, it's very dirty inside. But here you can see the 8086 as well as an 8087 coprocessor. So this machine definitely is going to appear at some point on my channel, but I haven't done anything to it yet. I just opened it up and looked inside. But as you can see, there is a hard drive. There is a floppy drive, which by the way is the 1.44 megabyte version. So I'm happy about that. And yeah, I think it needs a good clean and hopefully it will power on. I'm not sure if the hard drive survived the ordeals at the scrapyard, but well, we have to figure that out at some point. And then I have another box, which I haven't opened yet, so I don't know exactly what's inside. But as far as I could read, there should be an 8086 in there as well. This is an Aprico. I think the model is called 0.7. I have no experience with this, but it's supposed to have an 8086 with around 5 megahertz. I have absolutely no experience with this machine, and I don't know if I will be able to fix it. The keyboard connector looks nothing like a normal connector that I have seen before. Uh, it will be probably a little bit challenging. If you have any resources or ideas or know anything about this machine, let me know. I heard they are quite the collectibles, but yeah, I don't want to ruin it. So yeah, you know what to do. Write it in the comments if you have any details, information or ideas what to do with it. Okay, let's go back to our problem here with MS-DOS and one megabyte of system memory. If you look at our system files, in the auto exec, I'm just setting a few variables. Then I have my mouse driver and I'm initializing the sound card because we want to play around with the game later on. And if we go to our config file, then we see there is nothing in it. We are basically just running a very basic installation of DOS. 
Now let's quickly see how our memory layout looks like. For this, MS-DOS has a small little tool called mem. And without any parameters, we get a small summary of what our system memory looks like. And here in the first line, you see the conventional memory, which is listed here with 640 kilobytes total. This is the same 640 kilobytes that we have seen in the system configuration summary, where it said base memory. And from these 640 kilobytes, already 65 kilobytes are used by MS-DOS and some of our mouse drivers and maybe Unisound and whatever else is loaded. Okay, so we have 640 kilobytes, but where's the rest of our one megabyte? I installed one megabyte in this system. You see the second line here that says upper memory? This is where the rest of our one megabyte is located. When IBM designed the personal computer, Engineers decided that 640 kilobytes is enough for user space or usable memory for the user, and the remaining 384 kilobytes was used for system functions, for instance, to store a copy of the BIOS or to exchange information with a graphics adapter, and so on. So 640 kilobytes is all we have left from our one megabyte of system memory. Now, if you want to get more information, we can run mem again, but this time with a parameter C. And now you can see which applications using what amount of memory of which type. So we see MS-DOS, which uses 57 kilobytes of conventional memory. We have the shell, which uses 5 kilobytes. And the mouse driver, which uses 3 kilobytes. And in the second line from the bottom, we see that the largest executable program size is around 575 kilobytes. And this was enough memory for most applications when the 8086, the 186, and even the 286 when they were in the market. So for instance, I have a game here, which should be familiar to most of you. Let's see if this one works. Yay, we have Lemmings running. We have just one megabyte of system memory and the system can run Lemmings. Let's just double check if we can play one of the levels. Oh, there we go. This system can run Lemmings, which was released, I think, in 1991 without issues. So we are running DOS, but then of course there were other games that were not that easily convinced to run on a system with just one megabyte of system memory. And this is Elder Scrolls. This is basically the first installment of all the Elder Scrolls series. So the first one was Arena, the second one was Daggerfall, then there was Morrowind, and then there was Oblivion, and the latest one is Skyrim. So if we try to run Arena, it immediately quits out and says, not enough EMS. What is EMS? EMS is expanded memory. And EMS stands for expanded memory specification. The expanded memory specification went through several iterations and it was mainly developed by Lotus and Intel and later on by Microsoft. I think there were three major versions. One was 3.0, 3.2 and 4.0. We are not going into too much details, and when I'm talking about EMS, then I'm always referring to the last iteration of it, version 4.0, which supports a maximum memory capacity of 32 megabytes. So what that means is that in theory, you could expand MS-DOS memory by another 32 megabytes. Initially, EMS memory was distributed on expansion cards, like ISA cards, Unfortunately, I don't have one and I really don't know what this is, what I have here. I just found this in one of the PCs, but I think this could be a 2 megabyte EMS expansion card. But I really don't know. If you know, also let me know in the comments. So EMS was a way to break the 1 megabyte system memory barrier that MS-DOS came with. To make EMS work, you needed some form of additional memory. This could be an expansion board, as I said before. It could be more memory, so we could replace our one megabyte with four megabytes. But as we will see with Turbo EMS today, it can even be the hard drive. And how it works is that you need a driver that can communicate with this additional memory device. And then it maps the memory into the area that DOS can access. This is done by four 16 kilobyte blocks that are accessible by DOS. But instead of going to the actual memory, it will go to this additional memory device. 
And what can be done is that these four 16 kilobyte blocks can be rotated. So let's say you have 128 kilobytes of external memory, even though DOS can only access these 64 kilobytes, you can have twice the data in it, depending on which area the frame references in the external memory device. Of course, this can be expanded to 32 megabytes. So through a 64 kilobyte window that DOS can reference, we can actually access 32 megabytes of extra memory. Memory. Lots of memory. Of course, this only works if we have the appropriate driver for the external memory device, as well as an application that knows about EMS and is specifically coded to make use of EMS memory. So Arena is one of those games that utilizes EMS memory, but we don't have any. So if we go back to our memory details, you can see there is no mention of EMS anywhere. So I think now it's time to see if we can get Turbo EMS set up on the system and see if we can get the Elder Scrolls Arena to start. So I have Turbo EMS on my drive. TEMS, yes, so install and let's see how the installation looks like. So as you can see, it was made in 1988. This is quite some time ago. I picked this one because it allows us to use a hard drive for EMS emulation. And as you will see in a moment, you must have been very desperate to use this method because it is slow. EMS in general wasn't fast because of the switching of all these pages that I mentioned before, but it allowed you to access a lot more memory and that is what counted. But now let's just continue with the installation. So there are a few options here that explain to you what this product is doing and how it works, but we want to copy the product files first. And we have them in drive A. I want them to go to drive C, but I say we go to TEMS, make a folder. And now we can copy those files. And then we can go ahead and configure it. All product files copied. Okay. Now we can go ahead and say configure Turbo EMS. And as you can see here, this is a very interesting option. You can pick a disk. You can also go with extended memory. This is something I will cover after we are done with this experiment. So we will look into extended memory a little bit, but not too much. For this, I have to upgrade the system memory from one to four megabytes. For now, we'll stick with disk just to see if this is possible and what kind of outcome we will get. Now we also have the amount of 16 kilobyte pages. This is what I mentioned before, and I think I want 256. No, this is four megabytes, that's too much. We need only 128 for Arena. So we need 128. This will give us two megabytes of EMS memory. And here it asks us where should it put the swap file that is used to store the data and the content of the EMS memory. And I also want to put this in TEMS. Disk IO fast. Yes, we will leave this on. Page frame align. So here you can configure where the location of the page frame is supposed to be. The page frame is basically the 64 kilobyte window where the four 16 kilobyte blocks are in. And this is the one that is always fixed, but the content is rotating. It can go from anything from block one to four to block 125 to 128. This is what we specified here in this specific example. And the EMS handles we also leave at 64, which is the default. Now, when we press escape, it will ask us if you want that Turbo EMS is going to update some files, which are our system files, and that's it. So here you can see that it will add a entry into our config sys and it will load the driver vem.sys. This is the driver that is responsible for communicating with the external memory device, which in our case is the hard drive. And it also adds some additional information as parameters to the driver, which for one is our location for the swap file, but also the m equals to the number of 16 kilobyte memory blocks that we specified before 
and this should give us a total of 2 megabytes of EMS memory. So now we can reboot the system and then we can see if we have EMS memory, even though I have only 1 megabyte of system memory installed. So before we go ahead and restart, let's check one more time our memory map. So we see this one here, we'll keep this in mind. But I want to show you also something else. I want to have a look at Checkit. Checkit is able to show us a little bit more about our memory configuration. And this is just here if we go to memory map. And as you can see here, we have the conventional memory, which uh, you see here in the bar, the 0 to 640 kilobytes. This is the user accessible memory space. And then you have the reserved or the upper memory, which goes from 640 to 1 megabyte, which is the 384 kilobytes that we have mentioned before already. And now we can see that we are not even getting everything from the 640 kilobytes. There are some interrupt vectors, which you can see here from address 0 to 40. And then we have a program space. This is something, I guess, maybe check it is uh, loaded here right now. But this is space that is available for us. And this is also available, so you can add those two together and then you will come to a certain amount. And then we're already jumping into the upper memory. But this one is not something I want to focus on right now, but this is very interesting for later on when we have more memory installed. But for now, we only care about what is happening here in the conventional area. So let's go ahead and reboot the system and see what changes. And as you can see, now Turbo EMS loaded. So let's see if something has changed. First, let's try mem. Okay, I don't think we got anything here. And the problem is that we also have to load another program. So I have everything under TEMS, but we also need to execute TEMS. So I just want to show what type of other options we have here. So we have some switches. With the option A, you can specify where you want to have the page frame located. This is the 64 kilobyte area where the four 16 kilobyte blocks are appearing. Then with the option D, you can specify where you want to have the swap file located on the disk or maybe even on the floppy disk. You can do that too. And then you have a lot of other options, including to unload the driver. But now let's just try to run TEMS. So it allocated the swap file and then we get a small summary here. And as you can see, uh, the swap area is 128 pages. So this is our 16 kilobyte blocks that we mentioned before. It copied the swap file into our TEMS directory. And we have a page frame starting address. Now, for those of you who are familiar with EMS, you can already see that that address looks a little bit funny because it's a very low address. But we'll get to this. So here's our swap file and you can see it's two megabytes. So now let's see what mem reports. Oh, we got something else. Well, we have two new things. First of all, we're using a lot more memory now. I don't remember what we used before, maybe 74, 75 kilobytes. Now we're using 139 kilobytes. And this is because the driver that we loaded is most likely placing the page frame into our conventional memory. We'll see that in a moment. But if you go further down, you see total expanded memory. We see 2048 kilobytes. This is our two megabytes. And we have free expanded memory because we have nothing that is using it at the moment. So we have again, two megabytes of free expanded memory. And that's great. But our largest executable program size now also went down to 501. We had a lot more before. So let's see if we run mem with the parameter C and maybe also P now because we have a lot more lines to display. So now you can see MS-DOS still uses the 57 kilobytes. Now we have VEM. This is our new file that we loaded. This uses eight kilobytes. 
then we have command five kilobytes unchanged ctmouse three kilobytes unchanged but then you have tems and tems uses 66 kilobytes of conventional memory and that's not good we are losing a lot of conventional memory the only memory we have access to yes through tems we can access now the other two megabytes but these ones are only accessible by an application that is actually programmed to use it. Which, well, Arena is, apparently. It asked us for extended memory. But most of the time, those applications also require a large amount of conventional memory. And if you don't have enough, then the application will not even start. Anyway, so now we have seen what this one looks like. Let's quickly go to Check It. So in Check It... The memory map looks a little bit different now. As you can see, we have the interrupt vectors are unchanged. Then we have programs, but here, right below, you can see that we have an EMS page frame. And this is where MS-DOS can access the EMS memory, basically all two megabytes in these 64 kilobytes. We are just rotating and the driver takes care of which block of memory is going to be visible under the 64 kilobyte window right now of our total two megabytes. So we have this EMS page frame right now, which takes about 66, 67 kilobytes. There is some overhead as well. So yeah, we are left with 500 kilobytes of conventional memory. Now the question is, does the game, the Elder Scrolls Arena, start? And for this, let's try first the install application. I think this allows us to configure the game. Yes. So right now we have no sound, no music. Let's pick a sound card. I'll take Sound Blaster 16. And this is the correct configuration. Yes. And that's it. So let's see what happens when we start Arena now. Uh, insufficient base memory. So this is our 640 kilobyte area. We only had 500. Unfortunately, it's not enough. However, the game started. We didn't get our EMS error. So unfortunately, this was not good enough. What we can do now is let's try install again and let's get rid of the soundboard. And let's see if we get any further. Of course, I tested this before. Don't ask me how much time I wasted on this one. So let's try Arena again. <sighs> the Elder Scrolls, chapter one. And we even get music. And the mouse works too. So we have a mouse driver installed that also takes a little bit of space. <laughs> Insufficient base memory again. So now we got a lot further in the game. Unfortunately, it's not enough. So with one megabyte and emulated EMS memory on a hard drive, it is tough. Yeah, uh, only 501 kilobytes free of conventional memory. So what we can try is, maybe we'll get a little bit further if I will remove the mouse driver. So let's comment that out. Now we have 505 kilobytes free and the largest executable program size is 504. Maybe we're lucky, let's see. So we definitely do not want to have the sound because I didn't hear anything there. We get the music card and that should be fine. So let's see how far we get. Okay, now I have to use the keyboard because I do not have a mouse anymore. Okay, low, we haven't been here. So let's start a new game. We are running The Elder Scrolls, The Arena, 
on a 486 with 1 megabyte of system memory and 2 megabytes of emulated EMS memory that is swapped to a hard drive. Okay, now we can generate a character, I guess. Let's quickly do that. Oh no, again. Okay, so we got a lot further. So you can see a few kilobytes of additional conventional memory got us a lot further right now, but not enough. So what I will do now is, we have to try this without any sound. Okay, so this time I got the class Nightblade. Let's try again. And here you see how slow the map is loading. And the green LED is the access to the compact flash card, and this is constantly running. So every 64 kilobytes or 16 kilobytes are copied over to the flash card, and that's for sure not good. So yeah, emulating EMS on a hard drive is not a good option. And the moment the map was finished loading, the access to our compact flash card stopped as well. And again, the EMS memory is going to hammer the hard drive. Okay, so let's quickly distribute our points. Okay, again, a lot of access to our EMS memory. And now I think we will get into the game and the EMS memory hammers the hard drive. And we are still loading the game. Oh, here we are. Slowly, we're getting somewhere and we are moving. But the EMS memory continues to write to the hard drive. But can we move? Without a mouse? Oh, the cursor moves. Oh! Oh my goodness, okay, this is not playable at all. Of course, the hard drive is continuously written to 16 kilobyte blocks over and over and over. And I'm a little bit worried that it will just wear out my drive. So I will stop this now. And we are going to install 4 megabytes of memory in the system. Okay, and now we have 4 megabytes of system memory. This should be a total game changer now. Unfortunately, I also do not have my mouse driver loaded right now. Let's configure this. We have to restart anyway, because as you can see now, our Turbo EMS is still configured in a very low memory area, which means the page frame is still part of our conventional memory. And yes, we can see that we still only have 505 kilobytes free. So let's edit our auto exec. So first let's go ahead and enable our mouse driver again. This TMS is fine. So what we will do now is we will go to TEMS and see if we can change our setup. So before with one megabyte, we had no space anywhere, but to have the page frame into our conventional memory and have the data written to our hard drive because with one megabyte of system memory, there is simply no space available anywhere. And now it detected extended memory, so it will immediately put it there. So that's interesting. And we could go back to disk, but I don't want this right now. And we have also a predefined 191 blocks of 16 kilobytes. So how much would this give us? Oh, it uses all of the extended memory. Okay, we'll do that. Let's take all of it. This one will also just leave extended memory start on automatic. 
This is leave this option set to normal unless you have been unable to get Turbo EMS to work with extended memory on your machine. So we don't know yet. We'll leave this normal. We'll leave all of this as default. And let's see what happens in config sys. TEMS. There we go. So I think now it found it. Let's see. So we load vems.sys d equals x. Okay, I don't know exactly what that means. We can probably figure that out when we start the application tems with the parameter question mark to get some more information. But the blocks are 191. This is correct. Um, let's just restart and see if we get extended memory and where it places this page frame. Is it still in conventional memory or not? But we see the address, which is still at 11D2, which is a bit of a problem. If we check our memory again, I think we are down to 500 something kilobytes. And yes, this one doesn't help us a lot. We have EMS now and we can start the game, but unfortunately, yeah, we will not be able to play this game with sound. We just don't have enough conventional memory for this game. So if we go into check it, and yes, our page frame is right here. This is bad. So now it is time maybe to have a look at the upper memory area and to introduce another tool that comes with MS-DOS and it's called MSD, Microsoft Diagnostic. This is another tool that allows us to have a look at memory areas, specifically the upper memory. So I have my mouse driver here. So if I click on memory, this is the upper memory. There is a lot of information on this page, but maybe you can already see that there is something that we mentioned before, the LIM version. So this is Lotus Intel Microsoft version 4.0. I said before that I'm only referring to version 4.0, not 3.0 or 3.2. This is the version that allows us to access a maximum of 32 megabytes of expanded memory. And on the left side, this memory display, what you see here from 640 all the way up to 1024 is a representation of the upper memory. So this is the reserved space. What we can do is we can push our page frame into an unused area from 640 to 1024 kilobytes. These are these 384 kilobytes that are not supposed to be used. So it's very tricky to play around with this. However, every line here is 16 kilobytes. So from A000 to A3FF, 16 kilobytes. And then it goes every line up is 16 kilobytes all the way up to 1024 kilobytes which is the one megabyte ms-dos limit there is another utility the memory browser and here you can see that from f00 till ffff because we are start so this is the starting point fc00 this here at the end is the address ffff this is reserved for our ROM BIOS, our BIOS from the motherboard. And then if you go down, you see the video BIOS. So this is unchanged almost. Let's go and scroll here. So here is our video ROM BIOS, which goes from C000 all the way until C. So we're starting here. The second 16 kilobyte block is C400 but it goes all the way up to C7FF. This is the last address and then it flips over to C800. And then these ones seem to be unused, at least right now when you're using this application. So for our page frame, we need four of those lines. And I think I will just misuse location E000 because then we have, here we have 116, 2, three, four, all the way up to, is it EFFF? I think it should go up to EFFF. Let's see. 
Do we have EFFF? Yes. So here, this is the end. So we go from E000, four lines up, one, two, three, four, and then we go all the way to EFFF. So what I will do now is I will go into my editor and I will open our config. And instead of having this one set to H, which clearly doesn't work, we have to set this to E000. And let me go quickly to TEMS. So we had the A with the hex address in it. And then the fourth one is equals to an offset that says page frame starting segment four hexadecimal digits, and we determined that this should be E000. So let's restart the system and see what happens. Okay, so now we have our page frame starting at E000. Now it's interesting what we get when we type in mem. And we Definitely got more conventional memory, but we don't have any upper memory reserve. That's a little bit worrying. So let's double check quickly what we get from MSD. And I'm curious about the memory allocation. And yes, you see now we have the page frame written here from E000 all the way up to EFFF. So this one looks fine. We move this in the upper memory. Let's try check it. What is check it reporting? Memory map. Yes, it's all the way up there. And it is out of our conventional area, which we need for running our game with sound. I think now we should be good to run the game with sound. So let's see. Arena. and it just crashes. So I tried this before, whenever I tried to relocate the page frame, Turbo EMS somehow didn't work or something just crashed and then I ended up in the command prompt. Before I only had one megabyte, so there was not really anything for me to do because every time I tried to load HiMem or any other memory manager for that matter, they all crashed. The only one that worked was Turbo EMS and it didn't care if there was no extended memory available. Oh, system even froze, so we have to restart. So I will try now to add HiMemSys to our config file and see if that makes a difference. So before we load our EMS driver, we need to load our HiMem. So I think this is the correct one. So let's see. If we start now, what is going to happen? And it looks good so far, but we were there before. So let's see, mem reserved used 320. I think this is about the same. Let's see what applications are running now. Or well, maybe we got less actually because high mem is running. Let's see. Yes, so we have HiMem taking four kilobytes. Then we have VEM running and all the other ones that we've seen before. Now we have HiMem running as well. Let's see if this makes a difference now. So let's try. Arena. No. We crash again and the system does not respond. So uh turbo ems has some issues i don't know if i'm doing something wrong here or not let me know in the comments i never could get turbo ems work properly so now it's time to get rid of it the main part of turbo ems was actually to show you that you can emulate ems from a hard drive but now I want to go ahead and have MS-DOS take over the memory management. It comes with all the tools that are required to have access to the upper memory area and emulate EMS memory. So we need to load a second driver because we are on a 486 system. We can use EMM386 
and this is an exe and we can use the rest of the memory we don't need to specify anything it should take the rest and that is it i don't want to go into more details because this will be something then for another video and let's quickly open our auto exec but and here we get rid of the tems we don't need this anymore and that's it so now if we restart we should no longer get turbo ems but we should get a page frame that was created by emm386 and we should have access to our full extended memory so we don't see anything here right now because all the output was disabled in the auto exec but now we can see here that we have access to our EMS memory again. And free is 2736 kilobytes. Let's see if we can figure out where the page frame is located. With MSD, we can have a look. And oof, we have a lot of more stuff here. So we can see that our page frame is exactly located at E000 and goes up to EFFF. This is exactly what we specified with Turbo EMS, but it didn't work there. Then we have free memory blocks here and the rest is more or less unused. So, okay, then let's uh, do the same thing with our two other tools here. Uh, this, is, this is just a different representation, so there is not much to see here. Let's check our memory with Check It. Let's see the memory map. Okay. So we have Program, we have Available, then we have Video, then we have another video, then we have Programs, so something is there. And here's our EMS page frame. That looks very, very similar to what we had before when we had Turbo EMS loaded. But I don't know, does Arena work now? I mean, now we have almost 570 kilobytes of conventional memory. I still should have the game configured with sound. Yes, both of them are still active. So let's see if Arena works with the MS-DOS supplied HiMem and EMM386 memory managers. Ah, uh, okay. Maybe Arena is not compatible with Turbo EMS. But this one looks really, really good. I have my mouse driver started, so we never got this far. So as you can see, we moved the page frame from the conventional memory to the upper memory area. And because of this, we freed up so much conventional memory that now Arena starts even with sound. And yes, we have full sound. And this one is working a lot better now. So I'm curious how the game looks like. We will see. So let's see how the game reacts now. I see nothing happening on the hard drive so far, which is the point to have the entire memory be in memory and not being moved to the hard drive. So let's quickly create our character. Oh wow, did you see how the map loaded? So much better than before. So yeah, Turbo EMS had uh, if you really, really needed EMS and you needed to run that application, yes, sure, that was a way to emulate EMS through a hard drive, but the performance was horrible. Ooh, okay. Yeah, so this one, this one definitely works a lot better when we don't have a hard drive that the memory needs to be written to all the time. I never played this game, by the way, so... Oh, there's a key.
What's happening? Hey, what is this? How can I fight this thing? Okay, I have no idea how to play this game. Okay, I'm done. So the game works with HiMem and EMM386, but unfortunately not with Turbo EMS. Yes, Turbo EMS allowed us to run the game and get rid of that error message that we've seen before, but unfortunately we had to disable the sounds because there wasn't enough conventional memory available. Unfortunately, Turbo EMS had to locate the page frame in the conventional memory area, which took away valuable memory space for our application. But that should be it for today. I hope that this was interesting to you and let me know what your experience is with EMS and maybe some games that did work or did not work. And did you ever have a PC with one megabyte of memory where all of this apparently didn't make any sense? Because with one megabyte, you can't have any of the memory managers because all of the memory was already accessible by DOS. And this is the end of this video. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and a big shout out to all my Patreons. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care and bye bye.